This is the window to our present again, and there are people on the other side. Welcome back to our very cool YouTube channel. My name is Alyssa. Papa Chaba there, here. Yeah. Hello. And we have a <laughs> tiny toddler named Annabelle. This week we're going to tell you why did we name her Annabelle? And we'll give you some tips so that you can figure out how to name your baby. Hey. Alyssa and Chaba from the future. Put on this video when you're arguing about the name. Also, I hope things are good. How is the solar panel working out? We're getting solar. <laughs> so exciting. So, so when you first start dating someone, you usually come up with names. And I think we always joked around and had some names that we knew we really liked and other names that we were like, Ugh, Penelope. No offense to all the Penelope viewers. <laughs> <laughs> so you basically kept track of the names that we both like. Yeah, over yeah. the years. You had that list and then you got pregnant. Tip number one is be open. There are no wrong answers. There's gonna be a lot of names thrown out that the other partner doesn't like. If you're married to a name, there's a name that I wanted for my kid forever, even when I was a little girl or a boy. If your partner just trashes on it, let it go. It, you, you gotta let it go because you do have to find a name that you are both happy with. Tip number two, we were looking at the initials. The big focus for names were in the O and the J group. Oh, what is that? Ariana. I bought that one. I love it. Put it in the favorite. No. <laughs> because we wanted her name, her initials to be OK. Or the other one, JK. It was really hard to find girl names that we both liked. You had to let that one go. But I think that's a good tip. If you have an initials that would kind of come out cool, might as well start your search in that letter. I will recommend a website called Nameberry. It's very thorough. It gives you every celebrity, every event, anything that's ever happened with that name. The next thing we wanted to consider was who are we going to honor in our daughter's name? It is tradition here in Canada to put some kind of honor into the name, whether it be a middle name or the first name. I'm from Hungary and for us, middle names are not that common. In contrast, in Canada, I have two middle names. I know friends that have like five or six middle names. Everybody's got a middle name. We had a compromise. We averaged out two yeah. <laughs> to zero equals one middle name. I really wanted to honor my grandmother on my mom's side, who unfortunately passed away when I was a little boy, but I was really close with her. And I have a lot of very fond memories of spending almost the entire summer at her place with my brother and uh, I really miss her. Her maiden name was Anna, so having Anna in Annabelle's name, that means a lot to me, and I cannot wait to explain that connection to her. Yeah. So or just make her watch a video. I know. <laughs> you know. So we knew Anna had to be in it. Yes. And lucky for me, my grandmother, my sister, and my mother all have the same middle name. Marie. Marie, yes. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> we figured, okay, our middle name was going to be Anna Marie. Yeah. So it was like, Question mark, Anna Marie Corsi. And that could be a tip number three. Keep your ears open and keep your eyes open for interesting names. I'm a group fitness instructor, so I have, you know, a list of members at my classes. When we were in the name hunting phase, I was always looking for those first names. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I actually really like that name. But it's so funny because it was all middle-aged women's names here. You were like, Judy, that's <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> tip four, more like rule four. We wanted our name to be easily said in both English and Hungarian. If you're one of those couples like us, you know, came from two different nations and cultures, it's very important to pick a name that would be easy to pronounce and even just spell in both languages. I loved the name Ocean. Ocean would not have worked. Pick a name that your grandparents can pronounce. It had to run through the Hungarian test. If you are dating someone from a European country who have name days, get a name day calendar. How helpful was that? Every day we could look at a new name together and say, oh. Tip number five, use the names in public wherever yeah. you can and just feel them. Feel them out. As we got closer to the birth, I think we came down to about three or four names that we really, really liked. To test drive them, we would use them in places that were public that used names, like at Starbucks. There were a couple of names that we were like, oh, we like this name. And then we tried it in one of these public places. It just did not feel right. It did not feel and right. And we were like, oh, we're scrapping that one. I do recommend as well, yelling the name up and down stairs. Cause you know you're gonna yell at your kid. Chopper! Testing out the name in the shower. Okay. I used to take the water and write and see how pretty it looked or how I felt writing it down. Next tip six, you don't have to tell everybody your name. You don't have to tell your mom and dad. You don't have to tell the girly at the grocery store. You and your partner have to work this out together because you two alone are responsible for the naming of that child. The people that you really care for their opinion, if they trash on the name or like, you know, not trash, but they are like, 
Oh, oh or they, they are go. not in love with a name that let's say you and your partner are both totally in love with, you will remember that. We had three or four names that we were both really excited for. We actually just didn't really share those names to pretty much anyone. So tip number seven, don't name your kid till you get to the hospital. You wouldn't want to be named until you were seen. We had three different names. Francis, Margot, and Annabelle. Francis would have been Franciska yeah. in Hungarian. Which is super cool. I, I really like that. If it's beautiful, we'll call it. If it's ugly, yeah, if it's like, <laughs> yeah, if it's like a little edgy looking, you know, Francis. then yeah. yeah. Don't settle on one name until you see your baby. Pick a couple. We just looked at each other and we were like, Annabelle. It's Annabelle. I will say, don't be afraid to change your mind. Halfway through your pregnancy or whatever it changes, that's okay. Yeah, like with Daenerys, you know? Yeah. You are set on Daenerys and then the last episode of Game on Thrones happens. Don't be afraid to change your mind. <laughs> Don't name your kid after any character or movie or something, unless that series is done. These were the strategies that we used and this is how we landed with our daughter's name without any kind of friction or debate. It, no. it just happened very organically. He said no to many, many names that the other person really liked and just there were no hard feelings. We knew that at some point we were gonna end up finding one that just feels right. It took us three days to name our cat. You might think that we named Godric based on Harry Potter. That's uh, Godric from True Blood. And Freddy is because of skins. Quick little video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. What was your strategy with not causing havoc in your relationship? If you liked the content today, it was a little bit of a talky docky Make sure you give this a big old thumbs up. If you want to see what my put stuff out in the world, hit the subscribe with the bell. We are here every week. And as Alyssa said last time, subscription is free. Toodaloo. Good job. <laughs> Bye. Name your kid whatever you want. Name it Garbage Pail. Garbage Pail Kid. And watch what happens.